What's up guys? This is the first video in a series on how to use Fastlane to automate the entire build and release process for your React Native app. So this first video is going to be how to build and release to test flight for iOS. The second video is going to be how to build and release to Android beta. The third video is going to be on automating screenshots. The fourth video is going to be on build and releasing to production. And the fifth video is going to be how to automate code push releases. I won't be able to teach you everything about Fastlane, but I'm going to teach you everything that I know about Fastlane. So subscribe to the channel and hit the bell so you get notified when the next video comes out in this series. You'll see a lot of tutorials for Fastlane that use the Fastlane command line tools um, for creating a new project. Um, that's, the command line tools are great because it'll pre-fill out a bunch of information for you. The reason that I don't do it that way is because you're creating two separate Fastlane projects, one for iOS and one for Android. I like to use one Fastlane file for both platforms. That way I can reuse a lot of the code. So we're going to create a new folder in the root level of the project. And we're going to create a new file called Fastlane. So Fastlane has the concept of lanes, which are blocks of, basically blocks of code that we can run. We can use before all to run a few things uh, before we run any of our Fastlane commands. So the first thing we're going to do is ensure git branch, which is a Fastlane action that makes sure that we're on the master branch. Then we have ensure git status queen, which makes sure that any local changes we've made have been committed. And the last one is git pull, so we'll just pull down any changes from the remote branch. We're going to have some code that runs for both platforms, uh, but we're also going to have uh, two platform specific lanes. So we'll have one for iOS and one for Android. So we'll start working on the iOS one. So we want to automate the process of building and deploying to test flight for iOS. We're going to make a private line that's going to create our build for beta release. Um, we'll just call this lane staging build. So the first thing we, thing we want to do is increment the build number. So the versioning plugin has this action called increment build number and plist, which we can use to uh, you know set the build number directly into the plist on iOS. Jim builds and packages iOS apps it basically takes care of everything. You just pass in a few parameters. We're going to pass in the scheme here. If you just have one scheme, you pass that in. If you build a uh, separate scheme, like we have a separate one for staging, um, then you can pass that in, and we'll choose our, our workspace there. So now we're going to build our beta lane. So this is a you know public lane that we'll be able to call from the command line. First thing we do is we call the staging build lane that we just created. So upload to test flight. Um, I, you know, you can probably guess what it is by the name, but it, it uploads to build um, the test flight. Once we make these changes, then we have uncommitted changes in our local repo. Commit version bump is an action that will add and commit the files that we just changed and then we can run the push to git remote to push those changes. Um, you know one thing to keep in mind is commit version bump will check for changes in the .plist file or in your Xcode project file. Um, and if those if there's any changes in, in those the changes will be added and pushed. But if there's any other changes, then the command will fail. So if there's any other files that get changed, this command will fail. One more thing we also want to do is update the version number. So let's create another private lane which handles updating the version number. 
Now we'll use uh, a similar command to increment build number. This one is going to be called increment version number in plist. And I, I think you can guess what that does. Um, and, and we can choose the bump type. So for bump type, we'll choose patch, which, uh, you know, in semantic versioning, that's the last number. If it's 1.2.3, that we're going to change to 3. You know, this will work pretty well, but um, every time we run the build, it's just going to increment the, uh, it's going to bump the patch version. But what I like to do is um, for every new production release, I, I like to increase the minor version. And, and you know, I, I don't want to have to deal with that and think about it. I just want it to be automatic. So what we can do, we can get the current version of the app in the App Store. And then we can check that to the current plist version and if they're the same then we will increment the minor version because we know that we have the same as the current release but we're working on the next release or if it's not the same but we'll assume we're doing another beta release then we will bump the patch number let's go ahead and start implementing that First, we will use an action called get app store version number. And for that, we just need to pass in our bundle ID. Um, and then we will get the uh, version number from the plist. And then we'll um, So then we'll compare them. So if they're the same, we want to bump the minor. Um, and if they're not the same, then we want to bump the patch. We're going to use this class called version, which will basically take the string version and process it into values that we can compare. So that way we can compare the uh, App Store version versus the plist version. So we're going to use increment version number and plist just like we did before. <clears throat> but this time we'll change the bump type to minor. So if both versions are equal, then we're going to bump the minor number of the version. And uh, we'll take this, we'll cut out the uh, increment version patch from the top and we'll move it down here into the else block. So then if they aren't equal, we'll just bump the uh, patch number. And another nice thing to do, uh, you know, is to, to add a little message in the console when these scripts run. So we'll add a UI message that'll just tell us which type of bump that we did this this, uh, this go around. So this is the first video on automating your releases with Fastlane. If you enjoyed the video, hit the like button. If you have any questions for me, um, feel free to ask anything down in the comments. Um, otherwise, hit that subscribe button because there's more coming next. See ya.